Yeah. It's just been dropped. I think it's just been heavily sanitized. That's what the issue is. No, oh, yeah, that's that's a, absolutely wipes or anything. Just what I forgot again. Microphone condoms. Ah, nice. You live a weird life. I'm sorry, do you not have a bag of microphone condoms? I do not. I do have a bag of like snacks and treats for people who have forgotten to like See, you we know, both eat have something different and, things. Yeah. Right? Oh. Yeah, no, we just did a speed run of opening ceremony. We got to a point where we're like, oh, well, you know what? We have things we need to be doing, and other people need this room, so get some OJ. You just have a fucking bag of holding with snacks right? in it? I, I love this. I have uh, an EpiPen, just in case. You never know. Oh, it's actually cool. Let me show you this. It's a treat. <clears throat> Comes with a little trainer module. So, like, if someone's never used an EpiPen before, you can... This trainer contains no needle or drug and is for training purposes only. Well, see if you know how to do, do it. Do not use this trainer to release black end against outer thigh. That wasn't the trainer! <laughs> I think that's brilliant. That's awesome, right? I've never heard of that. Yeah. That is really fucking cool. Yeah. Huh. Where'd you get it? Uh, I got it through my doctor, which is the same place we got it through. We got, uh, whatchamacallit, the, um, for opiate overdoses, what are they called? Oh, the, um, shit. Yeah. Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. Like, basically, the CDC at this point has been like, hey, you know what, if you need something, access to something that could possibly be life-saving to other individuals, even if you personally don't need them, like, your doctor is usually pretty willing to, you know, write the prescription. Than the long yellow ones. Yeah. <laughs> like for an emergency, especially if someone's not aware of what the heck's going on, like it's kind of cool and convenient. Furry's not being aware of what's going on. The world in general. The world in general. <laughs> oh. Is that just straight vodka? Shut up. That's what it is. Cool. Are you? You told me to stop admitting to what's in the flask, so shut up. <laughs> you sure you don't want some more juice? <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's nothing in here that's loose. I don't need a screwdriver. <laughs> Fair enough. All right, anyone who got here early and here's nothing. Is that straight vodka? Screwdrivers, we're about to tell you not to drink at the con. So, yeah, <laughs> right. listen to us. We know what we're talking about. We are untrained professionals. <laughs> I had training. <laughs> do as you say, not as you do. Right, right. <laughs> Say booze as I say, not as I do. <laughs> Fair enough. I do congratulate all y'all. Me and my friends were out in the parking garage. We're like, we're degenerates. We're drinking too early. How can we do this? We look down and there's someone parking in your parking lot. We're like, we're fine. We're all good. We weren't the first. Uh. Does anyone here know what Yomacon is? Okay, good. Were you there this year? No. We don't know what Elevator Con is. Oh? Have you ever been to AnthroCon? AnthroCon is notorious for having some of the worst elevators in the fandom. It's a 40-plus uh, story hotel, six elevators. It's a nightmare. This last weekend, I went to Yomacon. 70 floors, 12 elevators, multiple of them down at any given time, and fist fights. <laughs> so what happened is, uh, we do, you, you would know this better than most, yeah. contract negotiation. Oh, cool, yeah. uh, the contract for Perfect. a convention, the, the end of it is always the legalese, yes. but the beginning of it, the writer and the stuff, okay, Yomakai, okay. 20,000 plus person convention. Okay. Something happened. I was with their con share and I asked, can I see your contract? That doesn't seem like they should be able to do that. Not including the legalese. About how long for a contract? You're a, you're a 10,000 person con. How many pages you, are you talking? God, ours? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 60. Yeah. yeah. First square. It's yeah. a 1,000 person convention. The primary part of our contract is about 10 pages. Yomakai, 20,000 person is a page and a half. We give you the right to use our facility, have fun, meh! <laughs> oh so on Sunday, when the hotel informed Yomacon, because hey, you said the top 10 floors, 61 through 70, those are all staff rooms and guest rooms, correct? 
Yes. So those are the people that if we had to do something, you want to do, we don't want to mess with your guests. We want to mess with your staff. If we need to do something, oh, I guess we're renovating on Sunday. We need 200 people to change hotels. Here's their new reservation numbers. They didn't work. But mainly the voice actors for Yomacon. We're talking about people who voice for JoJo. We're talking about people who voice for uh, all the animes and your entire childhood. We're told to get in an elevator in the next two hours and clear out to a new hotel at the same time as 10,000 people also needed to leave. Literal fist fights for the elevators. Insanity. Yeah. So, so uh, we've gone to convention horror stories. Right. It's, 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 it's the free. It's the free. 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 We we do have more spaces in the front if people standing in the far back want to come. You know, I don't think anyone up here bites. This bites. Probably minimal biting up front. Minimal biting. Minimal biting. I can't promise no biting. That'd be against contract. I don't I'm so old and be dentures at this point. Like, <laughs> minimal gumming. Or, nope, but I, uh, no, not post COVID. Oh, right, that's a thing still. Yeah. Thank you, Ed. Thank you, Woody. So, <laughs> Isn't that great? Tip number one your first furry convention Be stay prepared. hydrated. Properly. Properly. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to start now. I mean, we got six minutes, but it feels like the room is full. I mean, that's what the pre show is for. Oh, just start talking oh, cool. now. Just, just don't give the real going. information right. yet. No details. No details. Save them for the show. This fight's on the elevators. Woo! Go! <laughs> Please don't have fist fights on Please the elevators. Please don't have fist fights on the elevators. <laughs> I had to warn people at opening ceremonies not to jump in the elevators. I tell you about people jumping in our elevators. People like jumping in our, I don't know what they think the best outcome of that is, but like jumping in the elevators, is, like there's no good outcome. If there's an outcome, if it's anything other than, if anything happens, it's bad. Don't do that. Don't jump in elevators. Why? What's the pot like? What is actually the? They, they, I I asked. I tried to get some semblance of an explanation, and their answer was just eh. jumping. Just, just wanted to see what happened. If you have an uh, answer for me, I don't know if I want to hear it. What? <laughs> so the answer, is, as far as I am aware, is that when the elevator comes to a stop, if you jump at the right time, the elevator will stop, and you'll keep going. You'll get a really big jump. <laughs> the answer is do double Do not jump. do this. They're after the double jump. Okay, all right, all right, god damn it, all right! PG. That, is god damn it not PG? PG. God damn it! <laughs> all right. Is it? I don't know. Uh, Look, I'm from the time when Airplane. Gosh darn it. God, oh, old fiddlesticks. <laughs> hey, do you remember the movie Airplane when you were a kid? Oh, yeah. Oh, the yes. goofball comedy? Yeah. Do you know the rating of Airplane? Um, it was, I think it was a PG-13 because of one scene which had to do with turbulence and women's anon uh, an anatomy. You are insanely close. Mm. Now it's PG-13. Back then, you were allowed to have one that was a PG movie. So my parents showed me a movie. We're in the middle of it. There's a camera doing a long shot down the fuselage of a plane, and then right in front of the camera, pair of boobies. Ah! I ran off. My mother, oh my god, my father. Oh my god. <laughs> that explains so much. Right? So much. <laughs> and we played this here when we did the aviation theme. Yeah. And it's, if anyone's actually ever seen Airplane, we all know that it could not be made in these days and times. No. It is so, so culturally insensitive. Mm -hmm. And I had to kind of go up to up in the crowd at the very beginning and go, listen, this is a really funny movie. Yes, it's very tasteless at times. It's very tacky. And, oh, my God, please don't sue us <laughs> for showing it. I love there had to be a disclaimer. <laughs> Most of our panels said that, oh, right, this is first for a con disclaimer. We're sorry. We're so sorry. <laughs> Just for everything. But we're happy you're here. Blame Fair Alkali. Right. Blame yeah. Alkali for everything. That's he's, my job. He's in no way affiliated with the West Ferry Fandom Incorporated. <laughs> That's how Or any of its subsidiaries, like First Squared. <laughs> or any of First Squared subsidiaries, <laughs> like, like MFF. <laughs> Do you want to tell them that really fast? That should take us into the panel. Oh, gosh. Would you like uh, to tell them why MFF is an affiliate of First Squared and know, why uh, First Squared is an affiliate of MFF? Of, of all the things like, that I have in this bag of holding, I actually don't have the... Uh, the coins, because I used to have, yeah. So we found ourselves in Vegas. 
uh, for FCLR, which is the Furry Convention Leadership Roundtable. And FCLR is an awesome organization because a lot of people who make these things happen, these conventions, uh, we work together, we kind of, like, we share a lot of staff, we share a lot of knowledge. It's kind of a weird niche thing, and, and you know, some people get sucked into these, and they work, you know, apparently more than one event. Few. Yeah. Just a few. So, so uh, I was chair for Midwest Fur Fest, and you were chair of First Squared at the time. Yep. And, uh, and we found ourselves in Vegas, and there may have been drinking involved, and there may also have been it was right. a roulette table, and there was, you know, we had these little coins for the for the convention that they were commemorative things, and we're like, you know what, this is basically MFF, and he's like, this is basically, basically first square. Like, this is what you it gambled like. our convention away? No, no, it was a gentleman's wager. Shut up. <laughs> they bet on red. I bet on black. Woody, what came up? Green. green. Double zero. <laughs> so from that day forward, MFF is a wholly owned subsidiary of First Squared. And, and First Squared is a wholly owned subsidiary of MFF. <laughs> we're all one big, happy, dysfunctional family. Welcome to the convention. Uh, we, what? Do we do it? No. How? Not even close. I, Not even close, it's one minute! You're horrible at time! That's why I'm running late. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> uh, okay, it's fine. We, we can, can start. start. We, we can start. We do, we do still have more seats up in the front, because now there's even more people hiding in the... I don't want to say hiding. Standing in the back. So if you'd like to move forward, we've got spaces and minimal biting and or gumming. Gumming? Yeah, if you don't have teeth. Yeah. God damn it. We'll get there someday. And here I thought alkali was going to be the problem child of this uh, panel. Not you, Woody. Usually I am. Let's be honest here. So introductions. I am Woody. I'm one of the vice chairs for Midwest Fur Fest 2022. That's the year now. Yes. yes. Okay, cool. Alkali. Uh, I was con chairman of uh, First Squared for about seven years. I've been on the board of directors for multiple conventions. Uh, I've been around for a while and uh, doing this, and I also had a first con once that I screwed up to the point where I ended up in an ambulance. So we're going to try to make sure that doesn't happen to you. It was after the con, I made it through the con, and then I went to the doctor. <laughs> That's good to know. Right. Hi, I'm Rama. I'm a vice chair here with Midwest Bird Fest also, and a former con chair here. Uh, I've staffed many, many conventions, and yes, I did have a first con back in 1999. It's been a while. Wow, you're know. old. I am old. Oh, this is the gumming cup. <laughs> oh, I see where you went. <laughs> we're here to teach you a few things that will hopefully help you throughout the weekend. We're going to be entertaining. We're going to be a little tongue-in-cheek. If you have any questions, please just put up your hand. We'll call on you. You can ask them. But we're here for fun, but we're also here to help, which is why we're going to start the same way we always do, with a general thing that every single person here should know and actually you kind of should follow, it works. It's called the 621 rule. 621 was created at a uh, anime con years and years ago by a gentleman named Dr. Passavoy. It actually used to be known as Passavoy's Law. We shortened it to 621 because who the hell is going to remember Passavoy? You know, a thing. Especially when you've not been following the 621 rule. Well, okay, you're on the board of directors. I don't think you're allowed to follow the 621 rule. <laughs> It's, I can do it. I get to laugh at you. Who here knows what the six stands for? What do you got? Six hours of sleep. Six hours of sleep. What does the two stand for? Right here in the middle. Two meals a day. Two meals a day. And what's the one stand for? All the way over here. A shower. One shower. Not bad. That's really good. Listen to it. And those are, of course, all bare minimums. Yes, they are bare minimums. But there's reasons. There is reasons. The six hours of sleep. As my friend over here reminded me, because I'm very used to drinking very sterile drinks, where sharing them is fine because their alcohol content will kill anything on the glass. That better be water. If this is water, it's too... Uh, excuse me, it's not noon yet. It's noon. Where's my flask? <laughs> Six hours is very simple. You want to recharge your body. When you sleep, that is the time that your body is fighting off infections, fighting off diseases. You are charging your body. Your body is a power plant. That six hours is going to help your immune system. 
And as we all know right now, we are dealing with something that you want a strong immune system for. Please, please, please. I had a first con, but really quick. First con, first con. How much do you actually think you slept at your very first convention? And I'm talking about through the course of a weekend. How much do you think you slept? Um, there's a photo of me passed out in uh, the chair in the hotel room because uh, just from exhaustion. Yes. So. Okay, so there, there's your number, <laughs> exhausted in a chair. So that's a really odd question for me. Uh, just because my first furry con, I think, was MFF 2004, and I somewhere around there and I showed up with a bunch of friends and we ultimately decided after an hour that this is just weird and I don't think I really want to I don't feel like the fandom really works for me and this isn't really what really? I want to pursue and and so like after an hour we left no way and that was my first work con and I think that a panel like this could have helped greatly which is why I find this you know important to talk about so I agree so I, I'm wow. super excited you're all here because yeah because it makes a difference. You're for... I know, right? I didn't know that about yeah. you. I've known you for years. I never knew that. It's like we never talk. Yeah, I never noticed. <laughs> <laughs> Six hours, like seriously, help yourselves. Six hours is for you. You want to do that. Sooner or later, you got to go home. Like I said, my first con, I don't think I slept. I came out here. I had fun. I met a ton of people. I had a blast. I can't tell you a single thing that happened in my first con convention. I went home and I lost 40 pounds in total because I had a stomach virus that lasted for two weeks. I ended up hospitalized on liquids and 100% it was because I stayed up for three days straight partying and drinking and being a moron. You can still party for three days straight but do it safely. Which brings us to two. Two meals a day. Why are you having two meals a day? Again, your body's a power plant. That's what gets you to the six hours of sleep. You need to eat, and we're talking about meals. A Pop-Tart isn't a meal. A can of Mountain Dew is not an hour of sleep. And, and energy drink is neither of those. Neither a meal, nor an hour of sleep. Nor a shower. We're not at the shower yet, don't jump ahead. At Yomacon, I just went to the convention, sponsored all their staff, the, 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 the sponsors, the, the staff lounge. You have staff lounge yep. here. If you're on staff, these are big events. It's a place to go and get a snack. And Yomacon got them a lounge. And in that lounge was $1,000 of a drink called Rip It. First off, maybe don't name your drink something that sounds like Whippets, because I was confused for two hours. <laughs> Second off, I watched their staff chug a thousand dollars worth of an off-brand energy drink. By the staff party on Sunday, there were so few people still around because most of them were either unconscious in their beds or not able to get off the bathroom toilet. <laughs> energy, like energy, don't energy drinks are horrible for you. If you drink them, fine, enjoy. They're not helping. You're getting a burst of energy and they're doing a horrible crash. Vitamins are so much better than energy drinks, and I know you're just pissing away half of them, but every once in a while, just give your body what it needs. Give your body what it needs is so much better than an energy drink. If you're gonna drink them, enjoy, but just remember, you're not helping yourself. It's not gonna get you that burst of energy other than a very short one. Get your sleep, get your food, and make it a square meal. There are places to eat around here. Please have a vegetable with your meal. Again, you're just trying to get that rounded out source of vitamins, and that's what your body needs. Parsley doesn't count as a vegetable. There's something else that doesn't count as a vegetable, but I'm not allowed to say it on this panel. Liquid potatoes. <laughs> Liquid! <laughs> we do have a food truck outside if you're it's looking cool. for, you know, yeah. something interesting. We also have the food that is available in the hotel, which is... Uh, I have heard good. Uh, it is also I had breakfast there. It can, was good. Can be a wait, uh, and yeah. is definitely not the you're paying for convenience. Yeah. Um, there are a bunch of restaurants across the street, which is kind of a stretch to say it's across the street, but it's across the street through a parking garage and like another little street. And there's you know there is a bunch of things in the area for food, and you know it's nice to kind of take that break and get away with some friends and just you know sit down and not be surrounded by the chaos that is this, which can be. 
overwhelming, and we'll yeah. come back to that. Speaking of that, there is a shuttle that runs from the convention center to the mall and to the entertainment district Same where time. a lot of those restaurants are. Uh, they run pretty much through the late evening, so if you want to go for like a, I'll say, quiet, in, in air quotes here, meal, a dinner, uh, that is a good option. Uh, and the final one, this won't help you this weekend, this is for the future. Uh, right now in my room, I have three heads of uh, romaine lettuce, some lunch meat, and some bread. My roommate has peanut butter jelly and bread. Cannot recommend enough. No hotel will ever mind you calling and asking, hey, when I arrive, will there be a fridge in my room? It will save you an absolute fortune. You will eat because eventually you'll end up back in your room. And again, that head of romaine lettuce, that's the key. Make sure you got a vegetable in there, well-rounded meal. I cannot stress this enough, eat. Don't starve yourselves, eat. The one, are we ready for the one? I don't remember, what was, what was one again? Yeah, <laughs> what's, what's the, the six and two is for you. <laughs> the one is for everybody else. The human olfactory gland, that is your nose, is the worst in the animal kingdom. And here is why. Have you ever been in a bakery? Have you ever walked into a store that had fresh baked cookies, fresh baked mm. bread, and that smell hits you, it entices you, it brings yes. you in the door, within a few minutes you don't smell it. Nope. You're just in the store. Yep. The human olfactory gland is actually set up to take an odor that is surrounding you, to take an odor that you're around and mask it. You will not notice that unless you really concentrate. Your brain is doing that to you so that you can still smell other things because, again, you got a crummy nose. You know what scent is always around you? You. Yes! <laughs> you can't smell you! But we can. We can! <laughs> the elevators can. Maybe that's why they were jumping, to get a little airflow so that maybe the elevators air out for a little. When the doors open, and I think, oh my God, they were hotboxing themselves in the elevator because the smog rolls off and it's like, oh no, the BO has sentience. Run for your lives. Understood. <laughs> the shower is for everyone else. You show, you shampoo, and if you're in there with somebody else, help them. Just give them a little Aww. Also, one can of body axe does not equal one shower. <laughs> Quite the opposite. People are allergic to that, don't forget. It's... Also, don't bathe in aftershave. That's that's one. Yeah. That's a new one we had to start telling. That's nice. That's uh, nice. And uh, we're going to just say this one very bluntly. Um, cannabis use in Chicago... Uh, is, we are recreational now in Chicago. Oh, yeah. Yes. Uh, guys, you can't do it in the hotel. Yeah. Cannot stress this enough. We're talking about all smoking, but especially anything with cannabis and tea. This includes vapes and cigarettes and cigars and everything. It's, we basically follow the same you know, laws that you can do it outside more yep. than 50 feet, I think, from an entrance or something. Just not indoors. Here, the smoking is, uh, we do have a patio out, what is it, uh, it's upstairs. Uh, this floor. Yeah. On this, or is it on this floor? Yeah, yeah it is it's this right floor, on. I'm sorry, yeah. So it's just outside there, there's a smoking patio, and that's where if you want to go smoke, that's a good place to do it. And uh, two more things on this topic. One, don't forget that even though THC may be illegal here, there are people who have jobs federally that cannot be anywhere near it. Please don't just go to the smoking area and light that up. Uh, I ask permission if I do, or I just walk away. Uh, and two, if right now you're laughing at me, screw you, I'm gonna blow into a toilet paper tube with some uh, uh, dryer sheets in my bedroom. First off, please don't. And if you're not listening at all, you're gonna do it anyway, go on Amazon, it's called a Smoke Buddy, it's a carbon filter and it actually works. Please, for the love of God, there is one job that the Board of Directors actually has for a convention, and that is, Make sure the convention can happen next year. And if all the rooms smell like weed, it won't. It's Please. expensive for the person that owns the room yeah. to basically mitigate it. Um, also, it could possibly set off the fire alarm, which means you're waking everyone up. Do not forget those are particle filters now. They are not smoke detectors. It works way differently. So anyone out there who's thinking, oh no, this is a vape pen, it doesn't. It's a particle detector. Yes, it does. So, out of curiosity, uh, how many people here were at opening ceremonies? Okay, so probably about half the room. Um, 
Okay, that's pretty good. So yeah. there's a couple things that we should probably touch upon uh, opening ceremonies wise, and I am blanking on what they are, so give me a second and you fill some time. <laughs> and I'm blanking. Uh, professionals. Uh, he's just there. <laughs> Speaking of professionals, we'll take this moment to say uh, there's going to be a bunch of panels run this weekend. You're going to hear me say this a few times over the course of the weekend. Never forget. You will get out of a convention what you put into it. If you are here this weekend, you brought your Nintendo Switch, you're going to chill in your room for a little bit because you need to wind down, that is great. You do you, and you make sure you're comfortable. But on the other hand, if you spend your entire convention in your room, you're missing the point. Please get out there. There is a panel book uh, online, uh, Sketch. Thank sketch. you, Sketch. On the back of your badge, you'll find a barcode scanner. You can scan that little handy dandy quote unquote 3D barcode. QR, 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 QR code. QR code. Okay. Thank you. you can scan that with your phone and you can get our full scatter. Go to our website or go to mff2022.sked.com and you'll find the entire schedule of events for the weekend, including maps and locations of where everything is. And it'll also be up to date, which we can't say for a print book. Yeah. The reason for that is, and I can't stress this enough, who here has been to other conventions? We're not talking about furry. Anime, okay. Professional conventions? Prof I, there, there's going to be a little difference between a professional convention and this convention, just to, just to let you know. Uh, honey, you guys at least gave me two weeks notice that I was running a panel. They told me a week out of the con, hey, you're our MC this week, and I said, great. <laughs> People have been to anime cons and uh, general conventions. Do they do paneling like furries do? Do they have nearly the smattering of insanity and different topics that furries do? No. And no. why is that? They, they have panels. They have a ton of panels. I just just at Yomacon. 50% of the panels were Q&A. There were a few performance panels. But what furry has and they don't, and that, that is group panels. Panels that are just about a topic. Look at your schedule. Find a panel you're interested in. Why? Because people who are interested in that panel are there. That's where you're going to meet new friends. That is where you. That is why furry has the least amount of. I don't know how else to say this. Clickiness yeah. that I've ever seen. I went to Yomacon. I've went to Gen Con. I've seen all these things, and you just watch these swerves of people move around, never leaving the enclosure that they have created for themselves. And then you see furry, a giant pile of humanity with fur suits. All semi getting along, having a great time, and why is that? Because if you're interested in something, it's probably on the schedule. Go there, meet people that are interested in the same thing that you are. Get up on stage, have a performance, have fun. You will get out of the convention what you put into it. Please go to panels, please meet people, make the relationships that are going to last you a lifetime, and in worst case scenario, you get to come back here every year and see your friends. It's what I'm doing this weekend. There are people that I will not see for another year after this weekend, and I am so excited to see them. Why? Because I do improv, and I got to meet all these people on improv panels. We all perform together now. It is so much fun. Just please get a piece of that for yourself. Go to these panels, meet new friends. So I will say, uh, so it was actually 2005 because I have this photo of you from 2006. Jesus! <laughs> oh my God, I don't look like a whale. <laughs> you were so thin and lithe. <laughs> also drunk, you could tell by the cheeks. Right, right, yes. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so here's the thing that I wish I had learned from my first furry convention. I went there, I was with a small group of friends, and we kind of just felt like outsiders. We just didn't have the community we were... We were there kind of alone. And um, what's amazing about that programming is you're going to, as I said, find lots of things that are of interest to you. And if you go to those panels, like, you know, first one you go to could be this one, could be something, well, maybe you've already been to something. Has there been anything else? Um, I don't think so. Anyway, no, I think opening. Take a time to look around and notice the other people in the room because some of those people that you, you know, go to that panel with, you're going to find them at another panel later and maybe a third panel beyond that. And you're going to start to notice some of the people uh, who share your interests, you know, maybe they're worth talking to after the panel or outside of the panel. You see them in the hallway, like I saw you at such and such, and I thought that was a cool point that you brought up. Uh, one of the greatest things about the fandom, I've watched people come to their first furry convention panel, uh, and I've seen them go to other events, and, and maybe the next year, 
you know, they've found friends. They found their, you know, niche within the community, and maybe there's a topic that they want to talk about, you know, to others. And so the next year they come back and they submit a panel request, and and they run up end up running a small panel, and then you know people find them and they grow from beyond that, and and they move from that to not just you know watching a panel, but to leading a panel, to talking in front of strangers, to finding a, a personal strength uh, to improve their lives beyond the furry convention, within their jobs, within their home lives, and they find new friends outside of this, all because they just started coming to a furry convention, paying attention to people who liked the same things they liked. So, I mean, this is a great panel to just kind of notice other people who are at the same place that you are right now. You know, you're in a panel for the first time, most of you, presumably, many of you, uh, many of the other people here are in the exact same boat. So it's it's worth taking a moment to kind of notice that and acknowledge that, and you know, catch these people elsewhere in the convention this weekend. By the way, I just want to uh, point out that we have accessibility services down uh, down the green, um, grand hallway towards the ballroom, and one thing they do have here is this, these sets of communication badges. So as you can see, that I have mine set to green, which means I am happy to basically strike up a conversation with anyone that wants to come to me um there's also a yellow here which is eh, you can if you if i know you you can talk to me or if you just want to if you need chill time if you need to just you know relax there's also the red which is a signal to basically say i just don't want to talk right now so if you feel uh feel free to run by the accessibility services uh table uh booth and uh, they'll be happy to get you a set of these I think this is a very good, uh, good idea, good um, icebreaker or for the. I like those. Yeah, oh, I like yeah. that you guys do those. That's yeah. really good. Uh, and speaking of you know the, the red or just needing a moment away, we have the quiet room, which is on the lower level oh, in Malapenza. Malapenza, I never know. Oh, that's what you told me not to go to that room. That's Got it. Right. Right. Not so, allowed anywhere near there. No, so no, no, fifty foot radius. Right yes, it's basically the opposite of this room. <laughs> Any room that I need. <laughs> yes, I wasn't going to get, yes. <laughs> yes, so, so So, yeah, if you need a um, couple minutes um, just to s get away from everything, that's a good place to just go there, calm down, chill out, it'll be quiet, and uh, regain your senses. Not regain your senses, that doesn't sound right. Yeah. Rebalance yourself. There you go. Yes. Um, you said you had stuff from opening? I do. I do have stuff from opening. It's uh, And I can actually go a little bit slower this time around, which is kind of cool. How dare you? I know, right? Oh. Um, so security, our security department is right directly across the hall from where we are right now um, in the uh, Liberty Room. Uh, if you see anything this weekend, you know, that's of concern, please take a moment to say something to staff. You can either find our phone numbers on the back of your badge. There's a phone number in the top there with an extension. The phone number itself is our corporate number and the extensions go directly to the departments here on site. Um, it's quicker to just kind of type in the number there than listen to the whole phone directory. Um, but yeah, so you'll find their phone number that way. You can also identify members of our security staff using their brightly colored vests uh, or any member of staff by noticing their bright orange lanyard. Um, or you can, again, just go directly to the, uh, the Liberty Room across the hall here and talk to someone directly. And they are here for to keep us safe and they're here to help everyone. So. If somebody asks you, if somebody in our security uh, group does ask you to do something, please do it. Please be nice about it. They should be nice to you. If they aren't nice to you, let us know, and we'll make sure it doesn't happen again. But please, make the, it easy for everyone. The reality is, like, all the rules that are in place, and there's not a ton of them, but the rules are in place uh, either because somebody fudged up uh, or essentially just to keep everyone else safe and make sure that everyone else is continuing to have a good time. Right. That's, that's really why the rules are there. If you ever want to have a good time, go read the uh, uh, rules and regulations of most conventions. You will find a section that when we started in the fandom was, don't bring certain things to guns that you shouldn't bring. You know, don't, don't bring uh, weapon replicas. And that was it. Well, then people started like, well, this isn't a weapon replica, it's an actual weapon. Like, all right. All right, all right, we will start listing. This is real. If you go to Anthrocon, Anthrocon has a list of items. They did this list because they had a very, very special attendee who every year would read their rules and regulations and find a new thing to bring. And that came to a culmination when he brought a disactivated, it would not have worked, it could not fire, but it was a real RPG. 
<laughs> they didn't list it on the list. Oh well, I guess so. So now on the list, like we were talking about, tele tele telehawk helicopter, oh, close enough. Yeah. Like yeah, don't bring helicopters or tanks, please. We don't know what else you have access to. Just don't do it. <laughs> yeah. Rules are written for a reason. Uh, <clears throat> this is something that. Uh, I, I love this about our state, and I think it's important to note. I wish I did not have to note it, but, but it is very important bringing up. Uh, the Illinois Medical Amnesty Law, super not fun, exciting title, but it provides freedom from persecution for underage drinking when a person under 21 calls for medical assistance rising from the consumption of alcohol. So obviously, if you're under 21, you're not drinking, but if somehow you have broken the law and you have been drinking, which is bad. Um, Illinois' greatest concern and our greatest concern is your safety. Yes. Your, your medical safety is more important than any of that. So there is an amnesty law that will allow you to find help for your friends and will keep you safe from persecution for that. Uh, I am not a lawyer, so this is not legal advice, but you know, please, if somebody needs help, let us know, let somebody know. Don't just walk away. That's the reason this law exists, is because some people simply drop their friends off somewhere and hope for the best, and that is horrifying. Yeah. Um, also, uh, we are very excited to welcome Howard Brown back this year to provide free and confidential HIV testing. Uh, so we have expanded that to two locations. You, I I think this Thank is an amazing service. There, service, service, words. Um, there are. There are people coming here from all over the country and all over the world who may not have access to the same resources that we do here in Chicago, which is an awesome place. Um, so, you know, if you have not been tested for HIV lately, why not? There's a location right around the corner here. There's another location in the convention center. Uh, if you walk into the art show, it's off to the right of the art show, off to the right of the artist alley, to the right of the artist marketplace, just past the first soup corner and both of these locations are open today and tomorrow. Uh, you can find more details in SCED, but you know what? It is a super popular thing, and I'm super happy that we have them here. I could not be agree. I'm so, yeah. the moment I found out you guys were doing that, I was insane. I pushed for that so hard, and it was one of those things when I brought it up to the board, they're like, nah, let's talk about it. And, and it wasn't a long talk, but it was definitely a we need to really okay. Well, talk the, about the, there's a reason for that. Like, let's remember where the fandom was <clears throat> right. like seven years ago. I, I don't know who who here is like you've been around in the fandom for a while. I, there's no real number, but okay. So a lot of you have been around for the time of MTV's uh, uh, shows on us, Tyra Banks shows on us. Uh, what's that stupid detective show? CSI. 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 So yeah, Furry was one of those things. But now we have Zootopia. We have Target making $4 fursuits. Like, no, they're marketing to us now. We don't need to be behind the curtains. And one of those things that a lot of uh, fur cons were like, oh, no, we don't want to be overtly sexual. This is not sexual. You are getting people tasted for HIV. Yeah. I yeah. could not have been happier when I found out you guys were doing it. Is America Thanks. who can argue against free medical care of any sort? <laughs> well, how could you? How is this allowed? Right. Right. Who is this Howard Brown? Oh. Canadian? <laughs> Howard, go back to Canada, you communists. Uh, uh. I'm done. Uh, and really quick, because you mentioned security, I want to throw this one out there. I'm assuming that it's not it. Lost and found. Where is yeah, your lost room? and oh, yeah. found here is an operations room. So if you've lost anything, be it like a fursuit piece or a personal item, um, it's in the operations room, which is the Ronald Reagan room, which is also on this level, right in between actually security and volunteers. Um, they hopefully will have it. And if they don't, they will log your request and, um, you know, we'll, I can get contact information. So if we run across it, we'll, we'll contact you. We reconnect so many people with so many lost things. It is absolutely astounding. So, and we know. still end up with a lot at the end that no one wants to claim. Oh, yeah. Not even us. Yes, that's the, <laughs> it's usually the personal items that we just don't want to claim. Uh, we, we say this, uh, your lock screen. Uh, a lot of people do this. I highly recommend it. Uh, take a picture of your badge. Put it on your lock screen. That's as far as security can get. If security, if you lose your phone and security turns on your lock screen, your name's on it. We have ways to look that up. Yep. So, suggestion, you don't need to do it. I usually do it. It's very helpful. I've gotten my cell phone back very quickly. And last thing about this, and this is just a con by con, I don't know if you guys do this, 
major items, credit cards, license, driver's license on Sunday or Monday, do you guys hand those over to the hotel or do you? Mm, yes, yes we do hand those over to the hotel. We so, do have, a, you know, if something high value comes to us, we actually have a lockbox in operation to keep credit cards, phones, and driver's license and stuff. So but they should walk, but yes. Yeah. But if you don't have it by the end of the weekend, they can't keep it. That is a legal thing. It has to go to the hotel. So yeah. check with the hotel. We also have for things like that and really anything, uh, info at furfest.org is kind of our catch-all email. It gets brought in and logged and distributed to the appropriate department. So if you don't know who to speak to about your concern, info at furfest.org is your go-to for literally everything. Right now, uh, it may not be responded to immediately, but we do try to get to them as quickly as possible. I think the, uh, well, I'm actually, I'm sorry, that's your department that handles yeah. it. So in, in, you know, during the con itself, go to someone in person. But if, you know, something happens after the fact, you know, reach out to info at furfest.org. Cool. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, oh, thank also, you. Uh, just to mention here, uh, we've talked about elevators, but escalators, uh, we've already had to bring this up, unfortunately. Uh, please refrain from using them as gymnastics equipment anymore. Any what? <laughs> if, if no more, we have to stop that now. Uh, <laughs> if there's enough weight or drag on the handrails, they magically transform into stairs. Yeah, <laughs> which is inconvenient, I guess. Yeah, and so expensive. And expensive. It's definitely expensive. Yeah. We carry a contingency fund here at, at the convention to cover like breakage. We really do not want to use it. Please don't make us use it. Thank you. I am so glad my convention is small. <laughs> we broke a window once. We were like, oh my god, this is the worst thing ever. We're like, please don't set fire to our escalators. We have to pay for those. I'm like, <laughs> Matches. You know what? And that's worth mentioning too. Please don't throw things off of the balcony. Yes. Or the atrium. Or like frozen watermelons. Don't throw things. Just don't throw things. I met them. Did you? I met the frozen turkey people. Oh, so the turkey. It was it. a frozen turkey. I finally find out. I, this is the very short version of this. Years ago, not at a fur con, somebody threw a frozen turkey off the atrium onto that glass floor and spider webbed it, shattered it. And my question for years has been, why did some kids have a frozen turkey? And we kept hearing that their parents sent them with a bunch of food. I'm like, what parent is gonna send their kids with a frozen turkey? The event was near things. They didn't tell their parents they were going to a anime convention. They told them they were going to Friendsgiving. Their parents gave them the day. That's why they had a frozen turkey! I've been wondering for years why they had a frozen turkey. Frozen turkeys don't fly. No. It's that simple. Don't that know was, what else to tell you. That was so thoughtful. Right? <laughs> really, really good I, parents. I, good I, upbringing. I, I wonder, good upbringing. I, I wonder if the parents ended up having to pay for the shattered floor. I wish I would have asked that. Mm. I wish I would have asked that. Damn. Do you, you have anything go else? Yeah, I'm good with other things. Do you have anything? Your, We've um, got a one big one. Uh, do we have time? Oh, yeah. Are we here till another half an hour? Yeah, uh, I don't know what time it is. Oh, yeah. One o'clock. Fursuits. Right. That's where I was actually going to go. Okay. Fursuits. Fursuits. Do you want to get a volunteer? There's one right uh, here. Oh, yeah. I see. Can we have a fursuiter come up? There's an adorable well, fursuiter right you're here. Vers if you're willing. What's your Hi. name? Do not trip over the projector. Yeah. Yep. Careful. Thank you. My God, you're so tall when you stand. <laughs> Shake your hand. You're wearing red. May I have a hug? Yes. Yay. Yay. No. You don't want uh, to hear you. It's supposed to be green. <laughs> Still, even if it's green, you should always ask consent. And that's what that was. You know, I'm going to need your help for just a little yep. bit. Don't okay. run up. If you're if you're okay with it. Oh. Okay. Cool. First thing I did was ask if I could have a hug. Uh, our good friend Dragor says this a lot. First suit is not consent. We cannot stress that enough. This is a person walking around in a living, breathing work of art. Notice I didn't say costume. This is not cosplay. We are furries. This is actual art. This is possibly a personality of theirs. This is more than a costume. And all we ask is that you treat it that way. There are certain things that can happen this weekend. I asked for a hug. They had their uh, bed set to red. I was ready for them to turn me down. They were green. I got a hug. They might have said no. They might have waved me off. And never, never take that moment and think, oh my God, they didn't want to hug me. 
I can guarantee you it had nothing to do with you. This person is wearing a work of art that is made out of carpeting. They're warm. They might not want you to hug a sponge. <laughs> they might have noticed that you were eating Cheetos half an hour ago. They might be worried about their suit. They might want to go to their room and get out of it. Don't worry if you get waved off for a hug. Don't worry if the fursuiter can't interact with you at that moment. It's them. They need to get back to their room to cool down. Elevators. This weekend, you might see a fursuiter trying to get onto an elevator. Let them go first. You know why? They're in a carpet! <laughs> what else do you need to know? They are wearing that for your entertainment. Do they not amuse you? <laughs> Let them go to their room and take a crap. Dear God. <laughs> it's going to take them half an hour to get out of this thing. You're up in your room. Zip, bam, bam. We not them! <laughs> This is a two hour, oh, I gotta get this arm off. That's right, you invited me on this panel. <laughs> uh. The fursuits are entertaining themselves and you. Please, please, please remember that. A few other things. Let me get a, a, uh, this chair for a second. You're already talking about the safety features. Could you sit down here for a second? Yeah. Thank you so much, my friend. All right, now if you would, pick a spot on that wall in the back and stare at it. Aww. <laughs> Look at that little person. Sitting there totally motionless. Totally unable to see what's in it. They can be unconscious! If you see an adorable fursuit sitting still for too long and it's totally... Excuse me, you okay? No. <laughs> Big same. He, he gets that answer a lot. Well, now I don't know where to go with this. A fursuit in a chair, sitting there unresponsive, it is totally okay. Are you doing okay? Now you said no, which is a problem. Or an opportunity. Or an opportunity. <laughs> There are two answers to this question. There is yes, and there is everything else. I sound like I'm making this up. I sound like I'm being a dink. I'm not. You know why? What is the first thing that happens for heat exhaustion? Pass out. For no. what? Well, well, you lose uh, mental capacity. You lose mental capacity. You lose your ability to articulate, to speak. As you go through heat stroke, it becomes harder and harder to talk. So when I find a fursuiter, that is sitting very still and asks, how are you doing? Are you okay? Do you need any help? Do you need it? They say, fine, okay. They say anything else, hurricane! <laughs> I'm getting security. <laughs> the reason for that is, uh, may I ask you an awkward question? You can whisper me if you don't want to say anything. Sure. Uh, I think it was like 1,500. This is a $1,500 suit. <laughs> They spent $1,500 on this suit if they are sitting in a chair and unresponsive. If I don't do things exactly right, they're going to lose this suit. I'm gonna tell you why in a second. If you find a fursuiter, if you find anyone unresponsive in the hallway, there's a thing you should do. Number one, you find the closest person to you. Do not yell it to a group. Do not say, somebody get security. Do you know what that means? Nobody gets security. You look directly at a person. Can you get me security? They will say yes and leave. Then you will look at a second person and say, follow them. And you stay. That is how you deal with the situation. Why? The security team is actually trained with what to do in these situations. You do not know what's going on in this fursuit. Unless you are asked by the fursuiter to help them remove an article of the suit, do not try to help them out of the suit. You don't know what's going on. They could have a neck injury. There's so many things that could be happening. That's why we get security. And now the next level, losing of the suit. If you are taken away in the party van, the rave wagon, the ambulance, <laughs> the first thing they are going to do is cut you out of your suit. You do not have a choice. You do not have a way to say no. That is their job. They cannot not do it. If you get into the van, 
you're wearing a fursuit, you're losing the fursuit. Please, we are all here for each other. We're so good to each other, and this is just one of those things. Please be careful, fursuiters. Have fun out there. Be careful, but know your limits. And watch your drinking. Do not forget how much easier it is to suffer from heat stroke if you have been drinking and then put on the carpet. And this goes, yes, so when you sweat, if you are drinking alcohol and you sweat, what you're only sweating off is the liquid, not the alcohol. So you will get drunk faster. So just be careful, please. We do have, oh, I was going to say, we do have two areas here to cool off if you're a fursuiter. Uh, one is down on the entry level in the United AB here at the Hyatt. And we have one in the North Ballroom at the convention center. They're both uh, cooled. These are gives you privacy to basically pop your head. Uh, we do ask that only the suitor and one handler, one handler, one handler go in. Please do not bring in all your friends. This is mainly to keep crowds down in there and also to give the privacy to the suitors because some suitors just don't want to people in general to know who they are under the mask. Uh, it, it's also worth... I'm sorry. Oh, yes, and no photos in the first suit lounge. Thank you. Uh, it's also worth noting, uh, if this isn't your first furry convention, uh, usually at FurCons pre-pandemic, there were fans available to dry out your suit while you were taking a break. Uh, right now, we're still not offering fans because all they do is disseminate particles from inside of the suit head to everywhere else. So uh, if you need a fan, then you should have hopefully brought one with you. I saw a hand back there. Is it... Did you want to ask a question? Yeah. Ah, I was actually, do, we're about to go into We're about to do first and vision range. That's yeah, my favorite too. <laughs> All right, really quick before we leave this one, because it's very important. Does anyone have any questions on fursuit or general safety? That's what I like to see. Good. Okay. Thank you all. Like, it's not a fun topic to talk about, but we really want you to understand this. And remember again, like they said, the security is there to help. Please, if you see something, please go tell them. We're, we need to know, we need to deal with it. It helps the convention and it helps everyone have a good time. Now for the fun part, you ready? Let's show them how much your vision sucks. Stand up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, of course, my friend. Just so you know, she is actually legally blind, so. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh this is about to get so much worse. <laughs> Thank you, heads up, my apologies for the phrase. Sorry about that. All right, uh, so actually it's kind of funny. My mate is about this close to being legally blind, so I'm gonna ask the same question that I asked them. Tell me when you see the blobs. <laughs> Do it again. Give me a spot on the wall that you're gonna stare, okay? okay? We're gonna start right and left. When you see motion, my hands on either side of your head, I want you to raise that respective hand. So when you see this one, raise this hand, okay? okay. Right and left, here we go. There's one. All right, not bad. Yeah, not this is actually a really good suit. Okay, so the range on this suit is good right to left, up and down. Same thing, this hand will be down, this hand will be up. Tell me when you can see. There, there it is. That's what we're looking for. So very good suit, actually, by the way, wow. That's a really good vision range. We've yes. had vision ranges go down to this. That's, that's so we ask you the same thing. If a fursuiter can only see this low, what's down here? There's chairs. There's friends. And most importantly, there's children. Yeah. <laughs> I love watching a child get punted halfway across the room more than anyone else. <laughs> Dear God, why is he on this panel? <laughs> because I didn't say puppies. <laughs> Notice I went with child. When I do this one at anime cons, I say puppies, puppies. and they laugh harder, and I cry on the inside. <laughs> it is perfectly okay to yell, stop, to a fursuiter as they are about to walk into a chair or a child. Fursuiter's vision is very difficult. They are looking through a piece of carpeting. And where does that come into play with you? Not just screaming, watch out, you're about to kick a child, and then giggling. <laughs> you look forward one more time. If they're walking and you need to go this way, I watch people do this all the time. Excuse me? They're going to walk into you. They're going to trip you. They can't see you. That goes the same for hugs. That goes the same for pictures. 
If they're not looking at directly at you, they don't see you. We just want to let them know because some of you haven't dealt with fursuits before. It's a very narrow range of vision. They might not be talking in the suit. That's a very normal thing. There are normal hand gestures. The picture hand gesture would be, my friend, may I take a picture? Yes. That is the international sign for picture. Sometimes they'll wave you off. Do you know the wave? It's okay. You know, this is all stuff that you learn through the fandom. This is a wave off. Why are they doing that again? They probably just want to get back to the room. And if they do that, always feel free to ask them. Do you want an escort to the headless lounge or the elevator? Uh, no, thank you. No, thank you. Not a problem. Have a wonderful day. That's a fursuiter. Have fun. They are a beautiful part of this convention. Like I said, it's living, breathing artwork. If you're going to take a picture, make sure your phone is ready. They're in a carpet. They're going to be warm. Please be ready to take that picture almost immediately so they can move on. If you're taking it in a highly traveled area, get ready for people to just walk right through because they're not paying attention. Yeah. But seriously, they're there to have fun. There's also another thing with heat, the signal for when they're too hot. Thank you. Thank you. This is a overheating fursuit. That could be them asking you to take them to the lounge or just giving you the reason that they don't want to interact at that moment. Anything else on fursuits? One other thing on the fursuits beyond the uh, vision is also sound. Do you remember they're basically wearing earmuffs. So you may be trying to yell at them or talk at them from behind and they will not see or hear you. A lot of times that a, a good fursuiters will also know how to lip read. So they can actually, so you That's need to be point. in front of them when talking. Please do not approach, tackle, or chase oh. fursuiters yeah. from yeah. behind no or actually from the front. Ever. Ever. Yeah, approaching uh, fursuit from behind, tapping oh. on the shoulder, or whatever. Yeah, um. uh, again, uh, uh, interacting with the fursuit, be very careful about that. Yeah. This fur doesn't grow back. No, Never doesn't. forget that. The fur doesn't grow back. Uh, and also, you actually just reminded me of one and I lost it again. Really quick, your question. I'll come back to it. Be careful with that. You don't know exactly. That is That's very it. true. That is true. You, By the way, you, guys. you don't know where the intimate parts of the human inside the costume is. So be careful, be careful where you're hugging. Uh, you may end up hugging something you weren't expecting. The traditional way to interact with a fursuit. Uh, this actually looks like a very fluffy fursuit. I would like to interact with it. May I feel your fursuit? Sir. Thank you. Arm. Yeah. Balls. God, that is so awesome. <laughs> I love running this panel so much. <laughs> Balls of my fingers, never your nails. Fur doesn't grow back on fursuiters. And again, I ask to feel the arm. Booping the nose without permission, please yep. don't do that. And for the love of God, the tail. There is no reason for any of us to ever grab somebody else's tail. You don't know how it's attached. Some of these are attached with literal clothespins. Don't do it, don't do it. Which uh, really quick brings us to just general props. As you see, I have the top hat. Uh, you'll see other people wandering around with props. Don't take them. It's not funny anymore. It was funny a decade ago. That's all part of their character. That's part of their persona. Uh, I've been wearing this thing for over a decade. I don't like when it's and stolen. And it smells like it. This is the new one. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, be really careful with other people's props. Please don't take them. Uh, they're part of the character. They, they don't want them taken. They may laugh at the joke. Maybe it's the first time it got done to them. It gets old fast. Yeah. Your name one more time was Drizzle. Drizzle. Ladies, gentlemen, both and neither, give it up for Drizzle! So uh, a couple other notes. So uh, regardless of what you've seen from the Hyatt, uh, throughout convention spaces, you're required to be wearing a mask this weekend. Uh, the only real exceptions are if somebody is on stage and they're six feet away more from the audience, then you know that the mask end up getting very muffled. So you know that's kind of I think the only exception for it that's being allowed. Um, if you're out in the public spaces when you're in the lobby and whatnot. Uh, our medical professionals have asked us to remind you that there are 12 to 15,000 people here from all over the world uh, carrying things with them from all over the world. We suggest you continue wearing your mask here everywhere. Um, 
It's one of those things I know that in other parts of the country it may not be as commonplace as it is here, but very much so we are still wearing masks a lot of the time when out in public. It's not just COVID. We also have influenza coming raging back this year yeah. and then also what is it rvs respiratory yeah actually, something i just got a well, rsd i'm sorry thank you very much i actually just got a pop-up notification from the local county letting me know that there is a major outbreak right now of both of those and yeah. people need to be so, hyper aware of it and just in general concra that was the ominous right. thing that was around long time ago well i won't say a long time ago that was the general like you would, funk you would get because you know you would be with five, 6,000 people in close proximity. So it, you know, it's always bad coming back from a very enjoyable weekend and then being sick for a week afterwards. It's not fun. It takes away your PTO, your sick time. So it, it's just becoming, I think, better practice yeah. just to remember to keep. And if you need a mask, they're available in first aid, which is uh, Liberty. Liberty. Oh, really? Yep. We found absolute. them. I mean, not an absolute ton of them, like a few thousand, but in the Still. grand scheme of like the events, maybe not everyone here, yeah, but we have them uh, available. You have masks but not microphone condoms? How dare you? <laughs> what? So security from the hotel does. There was an incident last night which we have been talking to them about. Um, there, There's a lot going on there, but the security individual in question has been here many years and is very excited about the event. Uh, he feels absolutely horrible and we're working on getting him in touch with everyone because he felt that he was misunderstood. But we are sorting that out. We're trying to figure out what exactly happened. Uh, he's always been an amazing guy, and so it was kind of a surprise to everyone involved. So, yes, they are aware. And uh, they absolutely adore us. So Yeah, I mean, the hotel here has been wonderful for the most part. Um, there are, unfortunately, incidents, one-off incidents that we have, and, you know, we, we definitely want to work on everyone to make sure everyone knows boundaries, including uh, both our attendees and the hotel itself. So we are working towards that. Thank you very much. Um, so uh, I guess I didn't really touch upon everything about the elevators. Uh, <clears throat> the way elevators work here is this level, the lobby level is closed off for entrance to the main elevators. So if you want to go upstairs, you're going to find an empty lobby here. You have to go downstairs, down the escalators to the ground level. That's where you enter for the elevator queue. Our crowd control people are awesome. We love and adore them. They have a very unfortunate job of like telling people what to do all day. Or maybe it's a fun job. I guess it depends. No, no. Telling really people cool. where to go. Right. Uh, so if you're going up, please go down to the lower level to get on the elevator. And uh, once you're up, if you're going to come back down, Please wait for an elevator that's going down. I know there's a temptation to go up to go down, but it does not work. It will not get you there faster. It feels like you're waiting forever, but really you have to go down to go down. It's just the fastest way. And, and, and by the way, if you were at the beginning of this panel, that's exactly why the fist fights happen at Yomakon. The fourth floor, their first floor, cleared out first, went all the way up to 70, came all the way back down, and then the fifth floor got to go, and then the sixth, that's what happened. Please don't go uh, up to go. Elevators today are surprisingly smart. They know how long like a floor has been waiting, so they start spreading out the elevators to go in a particular route, basically, to drop people off as efficiently as possible and then pick them up as efficiently as possible. If you start disrupting that, then you end up with, mm -hmm. like, confusing the system and the hotel and the elevators in a hotel like this that's like a conference center and their their main way of getting of handling traffic is everyone comes down at one time during the day go to the goes to the conference and then after the conference is done they go back to their room and that's it what we do in furry cons a lot and you know the anime cons and stuff like that where it's more social you get instead of you know all the floors coming down to one floor or one floor going all the way up to other floors you get individual floors going from each other and that's what slows down the elevators here a lot and it's an unfortunate thing it's just not the way the elevators are designed to do <clears throat> what? two hours in this wow <laughs> uh talking about elevators so uh i've been asked to remind people please don't dance on the furniture um don't know why that's a reminder what? please don't dance on the furniture also the wooden boxes and stuff that like border the uh, you know giant pits the atrium don't dance on those 
Don't you know? Dan I mean, dance on the floor. I dance suppose. On the floors. If you want no dance dancing on the, floor, the ceilings. Don't maybe don't dance in the elevators. That's questionable. Nice. <laughs> Somebody my age. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, don't forget some of the things this weekend. Dealer's Den, please, if you have a moment, head over to Dealer's Den and see what the furries have to offer. These are small businesses done by your community, uh, having some fun and uh, sharing the merchandise with you. Artist, Art, Artist, yeah. Artist Alley Art you. Show. Uh, oh, yeah. Art Show. Yep. yep. Wonderful. Yeah, we have an Art Show. The fursuit. Uh, uh, Corner, yep. Corners. So there's a there's a segment of the art uh, artist alley that is geared towards fursuit supplies and creation. So that's there. There's the art show where you can go bid on art pieces and hopefully bring something home. These are all just remember a lot of these are your community. So when you're you're spending money with the people in the dealers room, the artist alley, the art show, the furry marketplace, and stuff like that, that's putting money back into our community, which is always a wonderful thing. Some of the rando things that I can think of, number one, if you've ever wanted a chance to perform in front of people, this is uh, one of the places that I have the most fun doing that. Uh, I've been saying this for years, these are the best audiences you will ever have. Why? Because we're furries, we want to see each other succeed. Tomorrow I will be running Open Mic right after the Neo Futurists. If you've ever want to try stand-up, I will be there. I've been doing uh, stand-up comedy for over a decade now. I will offer very, very friendly advice, always with a positive attitude. There will be no negatives there. And you can try your set in front of people. Don't have a set? Come up and tell a knock-knock joke. We don't care. <laughs> also, neo-futurists. These guys get the, they're, what are they called now? They're not the neo-futurists. Uh, infinite anymore. Wrench. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. The well, infinite... They, they are the, the neo-futurists. The name the of the show, show is, is the Infinite, infinite Wrench. wrench. Oh, I thought they... Great. Too much light was the old, old show. show. Oh, it was yeah. too much light. Not okay. Sorry, that was just a thing. Um, that is a professional show that's happening at this convention. I cannot recommend it enough. They're also so, local to Chicago too. They're there. We uh, drag them. Which yeah. right next to them. I've seen them a few times. They're wonderful. Uh, and okay, so performing yourself. Where is your thing happening? Where's my? Are you talking about open mic? Yeah, that's a wonderful question. Probably as far from the neo futurists <laughs> as possible. That's so, usually what you guys. Why is there that picture on my phone? Oh my God. So while he's looking that up, yes, one other please. thing I would like to go ahead and uh, mention is that if if you feel like you want to give us a hand, you know we have over 400 staff members here trying to make this a, as an enjoyable convention as possible for everyone. If you feel like that you want to give a hand, you can walk across the hallway there into I think that's Dulles. Uh, where our volunteer desk is and if you would like to give a couple hours of your time here uh, We have some nifty little swags a couple different pins a lanyard uh, If you give us enough of your hours over it, you may be able to come back here 2023 for free so I Think almost all of us started with volunteering. Oh, yes, it's very very rewarding Staff is actually a very rewarding thing. Uh, I've been staffed at so many conventions now It's actually hard for me to go to a con without doing some of this stuff. I'm very lucky I get to run panels for you all. It's very fun. But uh, if you enjoy what you see this weekend, if it's something that you want to do, don't forget, you can. All you've got to do is email. Yep. We are very much looking for folks. If you have any sort of special skills that you might be interested in helping us with, uh, I mean, geez, anything we can think of. IT skills is always something that we need. Um, sure. Uh, organizational skills, anything like that. If you're interested, you can email us at hr at staff uh, at staff hr at staff dot com hr at furfest dot org, and uh, <laughs> we can look to see if there's any if you're uh, you or, would fit or contract negotiation or corporate yes, risk cor assessment. Yes, God, like, yeah, a surprising we want kind of number corporate of corporate governance. Weird. We can yeah. also we can also use that help too. <clears throat> Questions. Oh, uh, yeah, no, I, I don't have anything else. So, do we want to any questions in the in the uh, audience right now? Throw it out to you guys. If there's anything you had uh, you wanted to know, any uh, weird questions? Uh, you can go to registration in Hall A. I would suggest that you don't do it until probably Saturday. Um, just let them get through the rest of the thing, but they'll be able to take your badge and they'll, they'll they can reprint your badge with a different name. I think you just need to bring your old badge with you usually i think after dealers loading happens they tend to start slowing down like, yeah i mean i i would say just look at the line um it, it's you know it's it's going to be your time standing online if the line's quick then great you want to hop in if it's you know long then you know if you can live with the old name that's perfectly fine anything else right there hi uh, so um uh, yes, the art oh, show. Art show, yes, and thank you. The uh, dealers den. Adult area, yes, yeah. the, the yes. The, so the dealers den adult area and the. No, I don't think there's a. Um, 
I take that back. I don't think the dealer's no. uh, room. Okay. Are, are I mean, not yet, but now that you told they, me, it yeah, yeah. Know, once I get but there, yes, definitely we... the art show. If you go to into the art show, they're going to ask you to check your bag. Uh, basically, in a little um, bag check area. This is for the protection of the art there. We don't want any artist's art to disappear without I, payment. I we do have signage up everywhere that it's a no yeah. photo zone. So. Yeah. Can I see a question up here? What do you got? One thing that may be helpful for others <laughs> is that I'm on an iPhone, mm -hmm. and when you scan the QR code on the back of your badge, the agenda comes up, but it doesn't list the room, and there's no maps. And Interesting. The, yeah, one of the volunteers helped me. He's on Android, and it lists the room for every for all of the, every event on the agenda, it lists the room, mm -hmm. um, as well as maps for the different topics. So if you I couldn't hear that, that was, sell your iPhones, get an Android. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, I will bring this up to programming to see if something is, you know, it might not be able to be fixed for this year, yeah. uh, but we'll look into it for next year. If you need a map, there are maps in operations uh, across, the, uh, across the hallway in Reagan. Uh, they're the old fashioned, yeah. you know, paper maps. You're welcome. Anything else from anyone? Going once, going twice. All right. So in that case, I'm going to let these two end it out. Uh, that being said, if you have any questions that you would like to ask privately, we're going to stay up here for the next few minutes until the panel ends. So until next time, please don't forget. I've said it a few times, so I need to say it again. You will get out of this convention what you put into it. Go to panels, meet friends, see the neo-futurists. Come to Whose Line Is It Anyway? Get up on stage for five seconds and say a one-liner. Come to Open Mic. Enjoy the convention. And don't forget, if you're not enjoying it, if something's going wrong, this is a staff badge. Tell them. Yep. Even if they can't do something about it, it's something that maybe we can do better next year. Yeah. Without you guys telling us what we're doing wrong, we're never going to grow. And, and along that line, if you do not feel comfortable coming to, or if it's after the convention, you kind of think of this great idea that would have made your enjoyment better, uh, our general e in, uh, info uh, email is a, a good place to start. So info at furfest.org uh, with any suggestions or compliments, criticisms, whatever you'd like. You know, something else I want to mention real quick, and now that I say it, I feel like we should have mentioned it opening ceremonies. Yeah. Um, new this year, our medical uh, first aid volunteers have expanded their offerings. It's a weird way to put that. Um, conventions can be a very emotionally complicated oh. event. Um, and we have a number of staff on this year who are mental health professionals. So if you find yourself in a point where you need somebody to talk to, if you're in uh, emotional stress, not just physical distress, please see our first aid professionals in the uh, security room and they will have someone who will be able to talk to you for a bit. All right? Yeah. Cool. All right. So again, thank if you have any much. other one-on-one -on -one questions, feel free to come on up here. Otherwise, that's been our time. So thank you for coming. Silvergatoman, you video that's not a jibe. All of you go to his YouTube channel and like and subscribe.